welcome back everyone to another week of our Sunday services here at the Kingdom Church with your host, your minister, and your prophet, Gary Rojas. I hope your week has been wonderful. I hope it's been blessed. I hope you've been increasing and learning. We have a couple testimonies to share today. But before we get started, I just wanted to welcome each and every single one of you that are brand new here, tuning in for the very first time anywhere around the world. We welcome you here to the Kingdom Church family, and we pray that you stay for the entire message because you just might catch a revelation. If you are a returning viewer, or if you are brand new and you want to subscribe, I would highly recommend that you do that by hitting the subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified every week when we do post here. If you are on Facebook, be sure to do the same thing because there's a lot of interesting things. You can hit that like page button or the follow page button because very soon we should be getting into a physical location. That is the next plan within the ministry. So be sure to go ahead and follow us so you can uh, follow the journey. Now, for those of you who are returning members and viewers, be sure to also hit that like button, right? The, the like page button or the, the like button down below because that does help with the algorithm. It is a very, very um, easy thing to do. It only takes about a second. And also be sure to leave a comment down below, you know, to verify your attendance, to make sure that you're alive out there, you know, that you're not just couch potatoes, you know, tuning in, but you're also participating. And you don't have to say much, you can just say amen, you know, and then it helps, right? Every little bit that helps. Um, so before we get started, I really don't know what I'm going to be, well, I kind of do. I want to talk um, about, you know, since I just filed my taxes, I want to talk about that revelation and the things that we're going to get into. But I also want to get into some testimonies before we get into that, all right? So raise your hands wherever you are, and I'm going to pray for you guys and for today's message. All right. Ah, Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this day, for another week, for being able to minister unto those which are watching all around the world, wherever it is they are. It is a great honor, sir, and I don't take it lightly. And I just want to thank you, and I pray that this message be revelational to them that are watching and that they catch the revelation and that it be a seed in them so that it may be fruitful for their life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so today I'm going to start with a couple testimonies. We got three in the inbox and one of them is a big one. So I'm going to open this up now. Um, I'm going back to not preparing any messages because I feel so much better when I'm not preparing anything. I can't explain it, but I'm better at just getting in front of the camera or getting into a location. And this is what I've noticed, like when I go places, right? I don't need to prepare anything. Whatever the spirit tells me in that moment, that's what I preach, that's what I talk. So I'm gonna go back to doing that. I'm not, here at this table, there's no message prepared. And um, I'm just, I, I, I feel a lot better that way. It takes a lot of the stress because if I had prepared a message, then it would have changed last minute because when I woke up this morning, you know, I saw my inbox and I saw three messages on there. This is the testimony inbox. And then after I've read what was written there, it would have changed up the message anyway. So um, I'm going to be reading three right and this is from mandela bull who actually lives in the same city i do so he says my name is mandela bull i'm 15 years and i live in trent new jersey i'm a weekly watcher for your sunday sermons and friday prayer sessions hey look he even attends prayer sessions and there's another testimony concerning the prayer sessions i just want to thank the lord for sending you in my path i've learned a lot from you and caught a bunch of revelations so he's been learning i love your teaching I can't wait to see where you'll be in the future. You really have a special grace over your life, and I want to be a partaker of that same grace. You've truly opened my eyes on everything. Notice how he says, on everything, not a few things, not some things, on everything. And he's been learning, he's been increasing, and he says, I'm not a member yet, but when I do attend regular service, I'll start giving. You are, you're a member in the heart, right? Just because you're not giving, because you're young, if you're attending all the services, then you are. Right. And, you know, uh, I'll probably get in touch with you soon to see 
what your situation is and then we can discuss and we can talk and, and see where it is that you want to take your life in the direction that you want to go all right and here's another member right Bridget Muyumba hopefully I'm saying that correctly right um, and these are these testimonies if you have a testimony and you want to share that that's at testimony at GaryRojas.com so right now I have three company emails this one is where you want to um, write your testimonies to it should be coming up on the screen testimony at GaryRojas.com and all these testimonies they're from members they're from people who are uh, participants who are actively participating so if you do want to become a member or you want to partner with the ministry you can even do that online at GaryRojas.com you can go to partnerships tabs and do a monthly partnership and that's also um, a lot of things be taking place because right now um, I'm going to be filling a, a job role or job description for sort of assistant or personal assistant or relations assistant who will reach out to all the members who will reach out to all the people and build relationships so that way we can get you situated and then I'm going to also be revealing to you one branch of the ministry or the vision of the ministry of where we're going and all the things that you can expect and all that stuff why because if you're this is your church if you're attending every week then you should be very excited of what we're doing here and what we're going to be doing and all the stuff that we're going to be providing for the youth the children in the neighborhood all that stuff especially when we get a physical location right but anyway it says good morning prophet i hope everything is well i just wanted to share a testimony regarding the friday prayer session see this is why you need to be attending friday prayer sessions because in every friday prayer session we're declaring we're decreeing we're praying for you right how is it that if we're praying for you right that you don't attend no you should be attending because each session we are releasing something because the spirit of the lord is praying now watch this when prophet gary prayed for us to receive the same understanding of the word as you do ah uh, i'm telling you the same same right if i remember well i read the book of revelations for more than two times right so she's read the book of revelations more than two times before even mark some verses but i was catching nothing she was catching nothing after the prayer session it was saturday i continued reading the book of revelations i actually still i was actually still at the first chapter to the second and at the moment i was reading the scriptures were so clear to me ah you see they come alive i'm telling you that's the grace that's on this ministry right these are things these are testimonies and they're they're every week right clear to me at the point where i asked myself if i've been reading the same book hallelujah praise god or not because it was like everything was new to me i received the ability of understanding the word i'm receiving so much revelations than before and now even enjoy reading the word amen praise god hallelujah right these are understanding i'll never stop thanking the lord for making prophet gary our leader because from the moment i started watching your sermons my life changed wow amen praise god hallelujah give jesus a hand somebody right my life changed so much and i'm just increasing more and more glory be to god hallelujah praise god right it's happening it's taking place it can be you where you're watching around the world wherever it is you know and then i can discuss a little bit more about that you know these are members these are partners these are people who've been giving and i tell you it doesn't matter the quantity that you give right from the least to the greatest there's people who are giving only three dollars because that might be what they're able to give, right? There's people who give a lot more than that. But then there's people who are recurring who only give five bucks a week or five bucks a month, but they're recurring, right? And they're attending because it's probably what they can give at the moment. Then maybe they're young. So that's, that's that, right? Now this one, I have to say, um, I'm so, I, I'm so like, Today is obviously after this service, I'm going to go be celebrating. This one was on March 27th, but I didn't see it until today. I literally woke up this morning uh, and, you know, I looked at my phone and I saw three emails. And I was like, oh, let me check. And then uh, to my surprise, this is what we have. This is a sister, right? Who I've been, you know, we've been in communication with us. Like, like, like what I'm saying, when I build up relationships, when I'm doing all this stuff, right? I'm advising, I'm giving counsel. And this is her testimony. Good morning, Prophet. I am so happy to say that my daughter received Jesus as her Lord and Savior this morning. Uh, hallelujah. And exclamation marks. We got a lot of exclamation marks in this one. 
this is you know this is testimonies things are taking place things are happening here i'm telling you right she said she is ready to go to school and preach the gospel amen glory to god praise god look it's right there right it's taking place these things are happening right and there's a reason why this happened i can share, if i just told you if i can share with you this person came into the ministry i think in january right late january and it's been less than 60 days so imagine that imagine being in a ministry coming here your daughter has never been saved before but coming and listening to the anointing that's upon this house and actually obeying the commandments of the lord and even there's a lot of things to her testimony that everything that i've told her to do she's done right and there was even um a seed time and harvest i don't know if you remember that video where i released something i said for those of you who give this amount give this amount and especially a thousand you can harvest the soul whatever it is that you pray for and she's only one out of the two people that have done that have done that and look at that less than 60 days she's received a healing she's received well not a healing it's a miracle right that's what her, her daughter received jesus right and i i do want to actually say that because i know there's one of you claudia that's watching me the reason why i want to share this testimony is for your hope because we were just talking about this not even like a week ago the same week right because um that's your same situation and what i've noticed here it's the same most of the mothers that i speak to it's the daughter right so for, if that's you right now if you're watching this video right now and you have a daughter you have a son and you want them saved i'm telling you you just got to apply the word right apply the revelation and there's a lot of different things as to why this is it's happened why it's taken place um to, to which if i if i describe here right now i mean we'll be here all day right and it will kind of get away from what we want to get really into in the message but claudia if you're listening that is that is the hope right that is the hope that we we are getting to and i've already told you that it's done it's taking place right it's already done your family's you know you got you got a lot you got a lot of children and your your husband and all that stuff so it's taking place right it's gonna happen but i wanted to share that not just for you but for anyone that is watching here now i will get into a little bit of this message because this message i want to take it in the direction of of giving but not telling you to give right so this is a, a message about seeding and a, a lot of different revelations i really don't honestly don't know where i'm going with this because i've learned to kind of just flow with the spirit because you hear people when they're praying or you hear ministers and they say all right it's time to now get into the spirit it's time now to get into the spirit if you hear that then it's kind of like when did you ever get out now i know it's like the generic language is like okay let's get into the spirit like within the group but you should always be in the spirit you should never be out of the spirit you should always be in the spirit right and the way you're in the spirit is by is by moving in love right because the spirit is love so when you're always in love when you're always operating in love that's a good indicator to for you to know that you are moving in the spirit right so what what is this message really about well i wanted to talk about this message because if you notice we are in tax season right typically this is when everyone does their taxes right so i ended up doing my taxes i think this week or last week i forgot what it was I obviously owe the IRS a lot of money, um, but it's because of my own fault, right? I, it's about, it, it got to, I think, about like 18,000, and then I, I, I got like a deduction of like 7,000, and then I just kept doing some stuff, and I got it down to like 7,000. So, whatever, I'm not really too worried, but what that does now is increase my debt obligation to about like 46K. So, like, that's me personally in my own personal life not the ministry right that's got about like forty six thousand dollars of debt now what i really want to and i'm not worried about that right i don't care about that because what this message is about is to give you a revelation where when you hear what i'm about to release when you hear the teaching that i'm about to give each and every single person is going to catch something different right and whatever your situation is whatever it is you're going to hear something right so I'm going to reveal to you what I gave last year to my ministry, not my ministry, right? To my father's ministry, the Spirit Embassy, right? Because that's my church. Um, that's where I attend. That's where I'm subjected under. And that's the great prophet Uber Angel, right? 
Now watch this now, I need you to catch this. And I'm never gonna reveal to you ever again what I gave. So the re, and I, and I can hear all right now, like especially the doubters and, and the people who are just monitoring spirits. And I know they're there, they're watching, right? These are the ones that are they're just there to monitor and just to see, you know, this thing not succeed. And, you know, the Bible says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand do. And, you know, obviously don't tell people, right? But when you're looking at a teaching perspective, as a teacher, right, myself, right? Teaching you, my congregation, the people that are watching all around the world, the best person to teach you is the teacher himself and his own examples. If I give you an example about somebody else and this is what that person did and this is what that person did, then you're kind of sitting there and wondering, okay, but what about you? What are you actually doing in your own life, right? And that's the thing. I'm a teacher that's leading by example. I don't teach you healing like all these other pastors around the world, right? And these ministers teaching you healing about Jesus, yet they themselves have never healed anybody in the name of Jesus, right? That is teaching you demons, like the demons in the Bible, yet they themselves have never casted out a demon. Teaching miracles, and Jesus can do miracles and all that stuff, but yet you never see miracles take place within the church, right? So what I'm going to reveal to you is what is my, is, was my giving for 2021, right? So if you, it should be coming up on the screen right now. This is monthly, right? But I'm just, it's going to flash, right? It should be there. But if you look at the line 13, right? Because there aren't 13 months. This is the total. It was about 21,800. So it's about 22,000, right? So I'm going to remove that from the screen so you don't focus too much on that because I'm kind of going to describe what that is, right? So obviously, right, me and my own ministry, right, with my members, if you accumulate everything, I'm obviously number one, in my, even in my own ministry, right, I'm at the top. So I'm obviously leading by example, right, because no one's given that amount within the ministry. So if no one in my ministry has given that amount, then that tells you this, right, or, 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 or yearly, that it says a few things, right, that, how can I describe this? Because <sighs> there's a lot, it's a, there's a lot to this revelation, and I want to make sure that it's done properly, right? That when you when you have somebody, most of these ministers and stuff, right? I could have easily given that twenty one thousand to my own ministry, right? I mean, like, right? You you think like, and that's the thing. That's what separates that because. If I gave to my own ministry, then I'm sinning, right? If that 21,000 I sowed into my own ministry, then that's not giving to God. Because, and that's what most people do. They, they, they don't give, like ministers or pastors, they don't give to other churches. What they do is they give to their own. And that's why you see them never growing. That's why you see like them doing ministry five, ten years and they're not growing at all, right? And if you were here for Friday's prayer sessions, I released also, it was saying, you can't do what you did last year, right? Whatever you gave last year, you have to beat it, right? Whether, it, what, it doesn't matter if you only beat it by a thousand, you beat it by two thousand, whatever it is, you can't do what you did last year. And it's not just in giving, it's also in your praying. Because when Jesus said, he says, when you pray, when you give, right? Um, yeah, and when you fast, right? So these three things, right? When you pray, when you fast, and when you give. Right, all these three things you can't do as you did last year. So if you only ever fasted once last year, then you can't be that type of person. Then you need to increase your fasting as well. Right? If you only pray for ten minutes, then you can't. You're you're you can't be like that by next year. Right? You can't pray ten minutes. You at least got to be twenty minutes. Right? Or thirty minutes. And there's testimonies people increasing in their prayers. Right? They're going. You know, there was a brother last week. Right? Who, who's, in, who's increasing his prayer, right? He was, he's getting to half an hour now, right? Me, I, I go all day, that, but that's different because I built myself that way because there's a lot in here and the, and the Lord is telling me a lot of stuff and I have to, when the Lord is ministering to me, I have to like line it up, right? So it, so it goes into what I really want to teach. So what, what does that look like? So that's increasing now in your prayer. And then in giving too, because Jesus says when you pray, when you fast, when you give. So it's all these three things, right? So you don't want to do what you did last year. And that's how you increase. That's how you grow. That's how you move at God's speed, right? So for me right now, obviously, this number of 21,800 
and that's that's all that I gave and I'm revealing it to you as my members as my as my attendees why so you can build up your own faith so it can be inspiration and motivation for you to say what 21,000 who does that right but it, it, that's nothing right in the sense that it, it's you and that's what the message that we're going to because maybe you're not there maybe you've only ever given an entire year five hundred dollars which you could have given more right but it's it's there to boost your own faith that it's that's a level in itself obviously right that is a level within itself because if i'm in debt forty six thousand don't you think that i could have used that twenty one thousand to knock off twenty thousand of debt in one year right see that's how you think and this is what I'm trying to break. This is why I'm trying to teach you within your, your philosophy, the way that you think and you operate, because the way the world thinks, the way the world operates is, okay, I have to work. I have to do all these things. I have to pay my bills. I have to do that for me to grow and for me to be rich and for me to do all that stuff. But that's not how God said. God says, sell everything that you have and give it, right? The Bible's theology, the Bible's philosophy, the Bible's principle is if you give, then I am in charge now of returning it to you, right? So if I gave 21,000 to the Lord, and again, after this video and even next year and all the other years that are coming by, I'm never going to reveal to you what I gave that year. You just know that it's going to be greater than the amount of last year because I'm teaching you this stuff and I'm not a hypocrite. I don't teach you something and then I myself don't do it, right? So obviously, um, if we, I'm going to put this, put this up back now, the image, because so you can see, right? If you look at the one and two, there's nothing there because I didn't give anything. So this is when, like, this is me. If you, if you watch and you progress last year's video, you will, there was, see me say things like, I want to get to this level. I want to get to the thousands. I want to get to that, right? So you can see here in, in January and February, there is no giving. There's nothing. Then in the third month, you should be looking at it. Just look at it on the screen because I have it here. You see in May or March, I gave 119. And then this is now when you see, oh, I caught the revelation now, right? Because it jumps, it jumps from, you know, 862. And then next month you see me go back, right? Because this, you can see the progress, right? You can see in March the 3rd, it's like, okay, 119. That's all that I gave in tithes and offerings and seeds, whatever, right? And then in April, you see, oh, okay, there's an increase there. Yeah, I caught the revelation. You know, like, oh, okay, like I'm robbing God. I can't rob him. I need to do all this stuff. And the reason why that's um, so much, 862, is because um, I also included in there the, the tithe of uh, taxes and what I, what I owed God from January, February, March, April. So I actually went back. And I looked at my um, my sheet and I calculated it and it was about like 5,000. So 5,000, if you do 10, right, um, that's about 500. So that's why um, April is so high because it was, uh, it was um, and I think if you go on Instagram, you'll see that there, right? And where did I get that? It was in Leviticus. Um, and I see, this is why I didn't prepare a message, because if I prepared a message, this wouldn't be in here. Now, um, I'm opening up to it right now, because this is, I'm doing this as I'm going, right? Because I'm, I'm done preparing messages, because, you know, I'd rather let the Holy Spirit speak through. So let's see if I can find this here, right? Andrinus of what of what my thinking is because you're my you know if we're gonna do this message if I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it right so I'm gonna take my time um, obviously if I prepared it then it would have been different but if I if I would have prepared it, I wouldn't have prepared this verse right because I'm going as I'm speaking right Ibraxiandrinos, just give me one second. Bracasiandrinos, triakias. Seankranaya de crotus iliambrinos. Bracariadris. Bracatriadres crotus iliangranaso crotus. Gritriadris, ikranaya de crotus urubractriadis. 
Yeah, see, I knew it was in I knew it was in the last chapter of Leviticus. Braxi aliandronus, brecatria dres caratria rusco, brisikiliambronus. So in Leviticus 27, Leviticus 27, verse 31. Well, we'll start. Let's see. Brecaria, which shall be devoted of man. Okay, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord right there. So it doesn't belong to you, right? And this is whatever you make, right? This is the seed or the fruit of the tree. This is your business. This is the job that you've given. It's right there. Is the Lord's. Is it yours? No, it's the Lord's. So that's why the Bible says when you don't give your tithe to the Lord, that's why you rob him because it doesn't belong to you, right? It is holy unto God. So it's holy unto Him. So when you don't give it back to Him, you actually rob Him of what is His, right? And most people don't realize the, the verse in Malachi, right? Chapter 3, verse 10, when it says, Ye are cursed with a curse, it doesn't say, I will curse you now with a curse, right? So those Christians that are around the world, the reason why they don't tithe is because they're already cursed. I need you to catch that. The Bible says, ye are cursed with a curse. You have to understand grammar, right? That is past tense. Ye are. It means that you are presently, right? He doesn't say, if you don't tithe, I'm going to curse you. No, if you don't tithe, that means you are already cursed with a curse. So if you say to me, prophet, how do I break that curse? You start tithing, right? That's the reason why Christians don't tithe is because they're already cursed with a curse, right? The reason why you tithe, those of you who are tithing, is because you have to realize the windows are open and God's pouring out the blessing. So he's already pouring out. So the money that you're getting for tithing, that is the blessing that God's going to keep pouring from that window for you to tithe, right? The reason why people don't tithe is because they're already cursed with a curse and they're robbing the Lord because it literally says it belongs to him, right? So when you, when you rob him of what he's robbing you, he's pouring out to you. That's why the Bible also says, right, in the book of John, that no man can receive nothing. No man can receive anything except it's given unto him from heaven, right? All right? So this is, I'm just explaining, right? And this is, watch this. And if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, so it means anything or all of his tithes, right? If any man will at all will redeem all of his tithes or any of his tithes right or of aught of his tithes he shall add thereto a fifth part thereof so god when you don't chart when you don't when you don't pay your tithes right in the heavenlies in the spiritual realms god actually charges you interest he charges you 20 percent right so you are accumulating a debt when you don't pay your tithes so that's when you need to be you need to go back and actually accumulate how much of your tithes you robbed him and then add 20% thereof and then your debt is cleared, right? This is, what, this, is, this is it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So when the prophet Uber Angel, right, when he, was, when he gave that teaching, and it wasn't a teaching, you know, it was just kind of like I, I was watching all his videos and I was just going back and watching things, right? I heard that and that was, this is how you can see, right? I caught the revelation and I began to implement the revelation, I began to implement the word, right? And I'm putting it up on the screen right now so you can see. So 862, what I did was, you know, I had that. I put the fifth part thereof, the 20%, and I sent it off. That's why it's 862. Then the next month was the normal tithe of 441. So that was just tithe. So you could see, excuse me, sorry, 441, that's about $4,400. So about 4400 in income that, right? And I just gave tithe. So I, at this revelation, I didn't know what seeding was, right? I didn't know the, the revelation of seeding, the revelation of, of the implications of all that, right? And then you look at June, the, the 6th, you see an increase, a double. So what I did was I said, okay, well, this is my tithe. Now I'm going to start seeding. And then you look, and then you look at, just look at the month of, of Jan, uh, July, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, you're like, what is going on? 100%. If you remember me teaching, right? If you remember me um, speaking, I, when, I, when I gave some teachings a while ago, you said, you know, like, I, I moved at like 80% or 100% of what, there's the proof. 
And you're saying, well, this is an Excel sheet. Yeah, because I'm not going to show you bank statements and go through all the bank statements. This is just what I pull out, pulled out when I needed to do my, my taxes. So you see here, the things that I teach you, I teach you them for a reason because somebody who he himself, if he doesn't do them and he teaches you things that he himself doesn't do, then he's a hypocrite. That's why the Bible says you need to test all the spirits. And this is examine, right? The word is where we get the word examine. And there's a lot there's a lot to that because you you i'm not going to get into that right so you look there right the july i obviously was like okay i'm I'm going all in on this thing so i jumped from 400 just tithe and then the rest is all obviously seed money and you know offerings and then the eighth five thousand imagine that right some people have never even given they can never even give five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars right and here in one month over five thousand right then the next month right three thousand right ninth tenth three thousand again eleven twenty six uh twenty one hundred the twelfth thirty seven now we're obviously in what april of 2022 this is why i'm saying you can't do what you did last year right you have to break records because the only way you can increase this is why Christians, they go in circles. This is why their lives are always the same every year. It's the same. They've been living the same Christian life for 10 years, for five years, for 15 years now. It's because nobody has taught them this stuff, right? Because if I give less than what I gave last year, then I've gone backwards with my faith, right? But I'm seeing now the fruit of my giving, right? Except, like I just received a call this morning for a job, right? Like, so I, so I have a part-time now because I wanted, I wanted to do ministry full-time so I can spend all my days in prayer and praying for you guys because that's really what, now I'm going to get into tithe, right? So the Levite, the priest in the old days, right? You would hire a Levite, you would have a priest in your home and you would give that Levite or that priest a tithe, the 10%, and they would not work. So the tithe was really for my, li it's really for the, the living of the prophet, the living of the priest. So, when you give your tithes, it is you're giving your tithes because I am your Levite, I am your priest, I'm your prophet, right? So it's for me to live. It's for me to have my living. And the Bible even says that even in the New Testament, right? When you go to when you go to Corinthians and Paul says that, right? That do not muzzle the ox for the ox, you know, eats of the threshing floor, right? So God is ordained for ministers to live off the gospel of what it's being given, right? But if you look at today, if you look at the church today, I mean, it's insane what people, how um, people, like, they say, oh, I'm not going to give my, my tithe to that ministry because they just robbed me. The minister's, he's got this nice car, he's got the suit, he's got all this stuff, the watch, whatever. Yeah, that's for him to, if he wants to do it, he's allowed to do it. He can do it because that's initially what it was instituted for, right? It's for his living. Tithe money is not meant to be used for things of the church and say like, oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, do this and mit and do that and do that and, and I want to expand. No, it's literally just tithe money is literally ordained just for the minister to live off of. So if the minister wanted to go buy a mansion, a Lamborghini or whatever it is he wanted to off of tithe money, he is ordained, he is, is sanctified for him to do so. But what happens is the devil obviously wants to sow discord within the church and people are just ignorant. People don't know these things, especially spiritual things, right? But if you have somebody that you know is, is trustworthy, that you have t trust, tested, tried, and proved, that you know, okay, like, yeah, my tithing is going to pay for his living, but he's also doing a lot of stuff with the ministry. People are growing, people are receiving. The ministry itself is growing, we are expanding, you know. Really, all that other stuff, the exploits and all that stuff, to move, that has to come from the excess, right? That has to come, obviously, because when you come into the New Testament revelation, it's obviously you give all, right? The New Testament revelation is your salary, whatever it is that you make, once you have enough, whatever it is for your family, then you give everything. You give 100% to the church and we dictate how you're supposed to be living. We dictate even what you're supposed to be eating and all that stuff. But obviously not everyone's faith is at that point, right? And the thing is because you don't see a lot of that, that church doesn't even exist today because here in the US, the, the church has been commercialized. Right. If you look at it, it's been commercialized. It's really, you know, how good is the worship team, the lights and all that stuff. And then the word is really not there. And it's just one day a week. They come to Sunday one day a week and it's not every day. 
So there's a lot of things taking place. There's a lot of things that's missing. And obviously I'm gonna put the image back on the screen right now. So you look at January, there was nothing. February, there was nothing. March, there was nothing. Um, and I'm obviously blown by those numbers, right? Blown, destroyed those numbers for this year. So I'm already on track to blow past my record for this year, right? So obviously I'm not next year when we do like, you know, whatever. I'm not going to tell you how much I gave um, because that then is now being like prideful and saying, oh, me, 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 this is how much I gave. For what? I've already told you once and that's what it is. I'm kind of just a one person so you can say, okay, this guy, you know, he actually does what he says he does, right? He And obviously I'm going to be beating my records because if I don't break this, if I don't break 80, 21,800, then I myself have failed not you, I haven't failed you because it doesn't matter. I failed myself in my own walk, in my own faith. I failed myself, right? So I'm strict on myself. I'm growing myself. I need to break this myself. It has nothing to do with you, right? Because you're not a part of this life of mine. Imagine now, imagine if I gave 21,800 to my own ministry. Would, it, would we be somewhere else? Would we be? Yes, we, we'd probably have a physical location already. We'd have all that stuff, but that's cheating right? Now I'm cheating God, right? And this is not including, you know, the things that I've have spent on the ministry, like equipment and all that stuff to get prepared. And then my living expenses, which comes from my job and all that stuff, right? So this is just 21,000 for the Lord. And obviously 8,000 of it. So I'm, if, for those of you who are math, you're probably going to be able to, so 8,000 of it, it was just tithe, right? It was tithe part, which means it didn't belong. So 8,000 of what I made doesn't belong to me. So when you look at that, right, that's about 13,000 in just seed money, right? 13,000 in seed money, practically, right? Um, and if you do that over 12 months, which we didn't, if you look at the chart, right, you know that it really started in July, half the year, right? But if you break it down, that's about what? Like around 1,000 a month in just seed money, right? So that's where I'm at. But I'm obviously past that now. Right. If you uh, missions week for my church, missions week um, for my church was this week, and I actually just gave everything that I had. That uh, that's where I'm at. I'm at like I, I was thinking. I was like, oh, I want to do this, this, and this. I, I this is what I want to do. This is what I was going to use the money for. And I'm just like, then I hear give all, and I'm like, ah, oh. you know, it, if it doesn't hurt you, then then it doesn't. You know, like it's supposed to hurt you, right? Because that's how you know that money does not have a hold on you. People say, oh, you can't serve mammon and God, right? But they don't really realize that they are still serving mammon because mammon has a hold over them. So obviously now I'm zero and I have nothing, right? Because I gave it all for Missions Week because it's going to a good thing, right? It's Missions Week. This is the promulgation of the, of the gospel. It's being propelled out and it's going to people who actually need it, right? And it's being answered prayers. And because I've walked with the Lord, I know that the Lord is capable. Like, I don't come on here and teach you nonsense and say, and say to you, yeah, the Lord is capable to receive, you know, to, to restore all of it and to multiply it, some 60. I mean, and just imagine, a hundredfold of 20,000, right? That's what's coming, right? Or the Bible says, and some received 30, and some received 60, and some received 100. Even if I just received, let's just multiply it, right? Even if I just received, right, 30, 30, 30, you know, 30 fold of 21,000. That's 630,000 in the realms of the spirit that's coming my way, right? But since I, I have, and that's what it is, it's faith, right? Like these things, it's faith. And, and I have been trying, I have been doing things the world's way for far too long. See, the thing is, people want immediate and instant results with God. And they don't realize this. And I and we've already started a long time ago. So I know I a lot of you guys are probably catching stuff because I'm just machine gunning it right now. I'm just going boom, boom, boom from one thing to another. So if you're not catching it, then you better wake up or you better watch this video again. All right. Because I'm releasing so much fire right now. It's ammunition, just machine gun, right? Most people, they they've been doing their lives for five years, 10 years, 15 years, and it hasn't been working for them, right? They've been doing it their way, 
their whole lives and it hasn't been working for them. And then when they try it God's way for one month, they say, oh, I give up. I'm not trying this. When they try giving, right, for a month or two, like they give, they maybe give a thousand, they maybe give a lot. And they say three months, six months later, oh, this isn't working. I'm done. I'm never giving. I, I was, I was abused. I was this, I was that. Bro, you've been... You've been doing it your own way your entire life, 10, 15, 20 years, and your life is the way it is. You've been trying it your way. Uh, okay, it didn't work this year, maybe it'll work next year. It didn't work this year. So you're okay with doing it your way for 10, 15, 20 years, but yet trying to do it God's way, after three, six months, you quit. Right? You don't deserve anything. Honestly, you don't deserve nothing because your view of God is like, okay, he's my personal piggy bank. I don't need to use any faith. When the Bible itself says that it's impossible to please God without faith, this what I'm doing takes faith, but I have already received the results of it. And I know that I would much rather give 21,000 to God, which is technically 22,000 because it's 21,8. Give 22,000 to God and still have this 46,000 debt, which is, which I'm trying, I feel... Which, which it's like every step that I try to make to, to decrease it, it just gets higher and higher, right? And yet my giving to God is getting <laughs> greater and greater. Like it's, it's like, but it's kind of just like, this is, why, this is why I say like the things that you guys, the, the stuff that you guys donate and give, which is, you know, I would say continue to do it, but it doesn't affect me. Why? Because your $10, your $20, your $100, if I'm already in the thousands giving monthly, then it, it really doesn't matter what you give because it's just being given out. And then this is what you think. A rational person, a rational mind would say, but that doesn't make any sense. Like, why are you doing that? Like, the, the, the things that you are making, you should just use it for the ministry and you should do it for that. No, because that's, that's how you think. Because if that's how you think and you're telling me, I'm, I won't do it because I've lost sense a long time ago. I mean, how do you explain somebody coming to the ministry in less than 60 days, now their daughter is saved, right? But it's, it's, it's the revelation, it's the word, and it also takes faith, right? These are things that, you know, like, I can only teach you because there are people who sow seeds and they sow like $20, right? When, the, when even after giving the revelation of seed time and harvest, which is, you know, saying it's when you sow a seed, it's not how much you give, right? It's how much you're left with. Notice how I said when I gave, I gave everything. I have nothing, I have zero now, right? And then I receive a phone call, right? And then I wake up this morning and now, you know, I'm gonna be having a sports, you know, and this is what I, so on the weekend, be, be filming sports, right? And making some side income and doing all this stuff. So like, there's things that, that work out, but again, when I sow a seed, I obviously give it an assignment and there's things that I do, right? And the assignments that I give they're big assignments, right? Because I'm giving in the thousands, right? So when you do that, it's, it takes time, right? And it's, and it's the revelation. It's like, you know, most people when they think, and this is now I'm going on to something different, is you need to know, understand agriculture. You need to understand that if you yourself are a plant, because the, the Bible likens us unto trees, right? So if you're a tree, and in farming, they call it a sapling, right? You know, like when you have the little pot and you put it in, that's like a sapling, right? So you're like a little sapling. You're like a little baby sapling, right? And what you're doing is, is when you come to a church, and, and this happens every week, people who become partners, and then after one month, it, you see it all. It's, I'm just testifying, right? People who become partners, they say, okay, I'm partnering $10, $15, $20, whatever it is. The next month, the money comes out, they pause or cancel their partnership. It's like, so what, like, what's going on? Like, what, like, what, who told you to become a partner? And then they probably stopped watching sermons, right? Because the devil got to them. They say, you don't need to watch or this or that. And then they see this money come out of their bank account and say, oh, I got to stop this. These are the people I'm telling you. These are the people that will never increase. These are people that never grow. And it's, and it's sad, but obviously when I'm praying for them, I pray for them because I'm not evil person, right? The Bible says to love everyone. So I pray for them that they find their place that they need to go because everybody needs to find a house. Everybody needs to find where they're comfortable. So even when I pray for people that stay and pray for the people that leave, I pray, Lord, I pray that they find what they're looking for, that they're able to come out of the wilderness, that they're able to have their prosperity, everything that they're looking for. Why? Because that's 
Christianity, right? The Bible says, seek after another's wealth, seek after another's well-being and not your own, right? And when you get into ministry, that's kind of really what it is. You're always seeking after the benefit and the well-being of others, right? But what is that spiritually? What is happening when people do that, right? Because if they do it, if they do it here, then that means they've been doing it elsewhere. They've been doing it before and they've been doing it their whole lives, a year, like forever. They get into a location, and then they start tithing and then they stop tithing or they, they start giving, say, oh, this is not working and they stop. What do I liken that unto? This is exactly what it is like, right? You are a sapling and you are digging your roots and then you are watering it, right? So you plant it into some good ground, you plant, you plant into your seed into some soil, nice ground, and then you water it, right? And then does it grow overnight? No, plants don't grow overnight, and that's what people don't understand, right? It takes time. Some you need some harvest, you harvest in three to six months, right? Some you harvest once in a year, right? So you have to look at it, right? As you're watering it, then you stop watering it, right? Maybe you, you're paying your tithes, and then all of a sudden now you just disappear and you stop paying tithes, right? So what happened to you? You are flippy floppy, you are back and forth, you are not grounded, you are wavering, you move to the left, you move to the right, you have no stability, you have... N People like that, it's so hard for them to grow because they are not strict, they have no discipline, right? They don't care for the things of God because if they cared for the things of God, then they would make sure their, their whole preoccupation, they would be thinking nothing, okay, what is God's first? I, I need to give God's first whatever in the day. That's why the Bible says it this way. Seek ye first the righteousness, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. Most people read that and they don't even know what is being said there. When you receive Christ, you receive the righteousness of God, right? When you receive Christ, you receive God's righteousness. So you're immediately righteous. So what is the Bible talking about then? Because how can you seek a righteousness that is freely given to you? It's a free gift. Right? You guys know that. I think you pretty much have grown enough to know that when you receive Christ, you receive His righteousness. So why does the Bible say, Seek ye the righteousness, uh, the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you? It doesn't make any sense. It's because this righteousness is different than the righteousness that we give. Right? This righteousness is always seeking the position of God in every matter. I need to say, because I know I speak fast and you probably miss it. You're probably writing, you know, this righteousness is always seeking the position of God in every matter. So when you look at your finances, you're seeking the position of God in your finances every time. I get paid, tithes out, okay? I receive an income, tithes out, right? If it's uh, the position of God in every matter, it's not even just finances, right? It's in your direction. It's saying, okay, there's something that I need to know, God, I seek your position in this matter. What is your opinion? What is your advice? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to get this job? Do you want me to work here? What do you want me to do, right? Seeking his position even in, in small things, right? In small matters, right? Even in your own life. Maybe, you know, you're in a, in a group of people and there's somebody gossiping another person and you know that gossiping is no good. So now seeking uh, God's righteousness in communication, right? You say to that brother and sister, you know, um, uh, can I just stop you really quickly? What you're doing is you're gossiping about this person. You know what the Bible says about gossip. Try not to do that. So what are you doing now? Now, even in morality, right, you're seeking God's position. So that's the righteousness that's talking about. So these people, what they're doing is, right, they put their sapling into the ground, their seed into the ground, then they water it, then they don't water it, right? But then you got people who, okay, they're good for maybe a month or two, three months, then they're watering. Now their roots, if you know, in agriculture, right, your roots, they're growing, right, the roots, they, they stem out and they branch out so it supports and gives sustenance and life to the plant. And just as they're about to receive, maybe they receive a little bit, now they're growing, they're growing a little bit, now they're growing a little bit, right, and just as about they're going to receive their miracle, they're about to receive their breakthrough, whatever it is, they dig up their plant and they go to a different location, right? They go, and that's what it is, right, because they stop watching this, and not just this, because this is I, when I come on here, I give general examples, right? And even when I tell you to give your tithes, I said if this isn't your church, right, then make sure you're giving your tithes where you go, because it's not giving to me, it's robbing God. I don't want you watching me robbing God. And the best way to do that is, if you have a church, make sure you give it there, right? But then it's like, if you're here watching, then why are you watching? Why do you keep coming back, right? Because then you're just now listening to two people, 
right? Because the, the where you give your tithe is where you're being fed, right? So if you go there to your church and yet they're not feeding you, you come here every Sunday, every week, and I'm the one that's feeding you, then now you're robbing God through me because I'm you're receiving the revelation, you're receiving everything, the things that you haven't received, right? And then you're paying your tithes to another house, right? So if you now, because if you've been wondering, like, who do I give my tithes to? I just told you, right? It's where you're being fed. It's not where you go. You can go to different churches because maybe you have a family, maybe you have a daughter, maybe you have whatever, right? And it's good to get into the community and it's good to do all that stuff. But if you know, okay, the revelation which I'm receiving here is generic, it's basic, I'm not growing here, right? And yet you're still giving your tithes. And then why do you, I mean, if you look at the views, it's like when I do my Sunday services, it gets anywhere from like 300 to 600 people, yet there is not that many members. So like, what are these people coming back here for, right? I'm just telling you. So there's a there's a lot to this revelation there's a lot here right and i just wanted to share that because i i wanted you guys to know what that revelation what that looks like right so from here on out in the future obviously i'm not going to tell you like when today's april right i'm not going to tell you what month of april is i'm not going to tell you what you know april may june july august all those months even to next year Nope. But if you would want, if you, if you did give last year, right, if you've been here since last year and you want to know, but I mean, if you've done your taxes, you should probably, I mean, you can look through your bank statements and figure out how much you've gave. But if you want to know your number, then you can just email me. It's, you know, the way that it's situated with the, with the um, Excel spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet that they give me from the company that you give, you know, through. And I just look at your name. I tell you what you gave. And that way you say, oh, okay, this is my amount, you know, um, then this year, you know, I want to break that. I want to, I want to do that. And that's good because then let's say you only gave a thousand dollars last year. Then you can say, okay, this year, 2022, I want to break that. I want to go past that. Right. Cause then now you're saying, okay, then your giving is good. And then you're increasing in prayer. And then you're increasing like Bridget, right? She's increasing in the knowledge every time, right? What's going on here, right? These are, these are the revelations and this stuff is for real, like it's for real, for real, you know, it's for real. This stuff is happening, it's taking place. And, you know, there, there, there is so much, there is so much to this teaching, there's so much to this revelation, um, but I can, I'm looking at the time, trust me, I know, <laughs> I know you guys, well, not you guys, because you guys are good, but the people who, you know, are tough to get them into a chair, into a seat for longer than an hour, um, but when I do get into a physical location, I can tell you this, um, I'm probably going to be going for longer than an hour, maybe two hours, three hours, who knows, because when I'm in a physical location, you know, it's different, um, but it might not be. So we know, be, however the spirit is moving is, is how, is typically how, you know, um, that's me, right? Because today I didn't prepare any of this stuff. This is literally... <laughs> This is literally all that I have on the thing. It's just the, the amount, so I was able to read it while the thing, that's all really on here. Um, but now the, the Lord is ministering to me that I did forget something. And if I get into this, if you're watching me right now, it's probably going to be another 20, 30 minutes. Who knows? Because now, now I'm remembering uh, where we need to go because I need to close this. So this is the conclusion. This is the closing verse, hopefully. Um, because for those of you who know me, when we get on the phone, we talk for hours, right? Um, what, what is this? So what, why is giving so important, right? This is re this revelation I'm going to give to you, um, of why, of why me being, you know, giving to another church, which is to God, right? That amount when I could give that to myself or a ministry and knock off the stuff then I wouldn't receive the blessings of God. I think you caught that revelation. Hopefully you caught it because that should be wondering you like saying, huh, why would he do something like that? Why would he give such quantity of an amount to another church? Why? I mean, he has his own church. Why does he just use that money for his own church? And they could have had a physical location. They could have done that a long time ago. Yeah, you see, that's you thinking your way. But the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you sell all that you have, right? And I will restore unto you all, right? So um, I've been doing a lot of things my, my way 
for my entire life and I don't want to do things my way anymore. I'm doing it the Lord's way. So if the Lord says give, I'm giving. And trust me, I'm going big this year. We're going big. We're breaking. Obviously we're breaking because I've already broken January, February, and March. Uh, but if you go, if you go to, I'm going to give you this revelation and we'll close. If you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, let me just read here. Okay, watch this now. Don't miss this. In verse 19, you've heard this verse many times, but you haven't heard it this way. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. You've heard this before, right? Where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, don't miss this now, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So watch this now. Watch this now. Don't miss this. And I'm going to, Lord, please help me so I don't mess this one up. Because this, if you catch this revelation, you'll begin to understand why I, I do what I do and why I give what I give. And then if you haven't already caught it, right? Because if you've already caught it, then... You know, this is just icing on the cake, but this is just more onto this revelation. And I still don't even know what the title is. I don't even know what to title this thing, this sermon, because at this point, it's kind of like if the Holy Spirit is speaking, then I don't really know, you know, because titles you look at, oh, we're going to talk about this and it's like that, right? It has to probably do something about, um, you know, giving or maybe something. We'll, we'll fi I'll figure it out in post-production, right? Once I, once I finish. So watch this now. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So your heart doesn't follow what you say. And I know some of you say, God, I love you, but you really don't, right? You say, Lord Jesus, I love you so much, but you really don't, right? Because the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. Above all things, who can know it? And that's in Jeremiah, right? So your heart is wicked and it's deceptive above all things. That's what the Bible says. Your heart is desperately wicked and deceptive above all things, right? So your heart can deceive you. You can believe that you're a Christian and yet your heart deceives you that you are, right? This is why the Bible says, and there are false brethren who crept in unawares. So that means who have crept in unawares, that they themselves are unaware that they're a false brethren, that they're a false Christian. But yet they themselves believe to be true Christians, but yet their heart has deceived them, right? Because your heart, you have to stick to the scriptures, right? The scriptures don't lie. And that's why the scriptures are truth, right? Because somebody can tell you other things about your heart, but if, you don't, if it doesn't align to the scriptures, if the things that people tell you about your heart doesn't align to the scriptures, then you will be believing fables. You will be believing uh, like lies, right? So the Bible says, for where your treasure is, your, there will your heart be also. So your heart follows your treasure. I know you missed that. The Bible says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So your heart follows your money, not your words. Because the Bible says this again. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now we're, now we're, I don't even want to stop. You see, like, I don't want to stop. I just love to keep preaching, but I know it's like, this is what I love doing. I could do this all day. And you guys know I could do this all day. Because as I'm preaching, as I'm going, the Lord is just ministering to me verses. But I have to find them because, you know, even though that I'm really good at this stuff, you know, locating verses, um, that's still, you know, it, get, it gets, it gets, you know, because there's 66 books and, who even knows how many verses there are, right? I'm sure a quick Google search would tell you that. But I know it's I know it's John. I know it's the letters of John. It's one John. Give me a second. One John. Hereby perceive we the love of God because He laid down. Yep, it's here. Okay, in one John three eighteen. In one John three eighteen, it says, "My little children, let us not love in word." neither in tongue, but in deed and truth, right? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. So the Bible is tell you, telling you, let us not love in our words, but in the action, in the performing of it, 
right? Because people can tell you that they love you, right? You can say that you love this person, you love this person, but those are just words, right? How do you know that they really love you, right? How do you know through the actions? What are they doing? Are they backing it up through their actions? And that's why the Bible says, right, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's what Jesus is saying, right? Because Jesus said, right, you, you worship me with your lips, right? Your, your lips do honor me, but your heart is far from me. And that's where Christians are today. They say they love God, but yet their actions prove another. Mm, I, know, I know you're, don't miss this now. You see, because this is, this is I, was, I was the same way. I would say, God, I love you. I, God, I love you. But my giving was saying something different, right? I was spending money on myself. I was spending on my living. And you, you, you've seen it there, right? Like, and I, I used to give to charity, so I wouldn't give to God. I'd give to charity. So like 2022, this is... In 2022, I only gave $1,000. It was like $1,200 to charity. So I was giving, but I wasn't giving to the church, right? And I, and I split them up to different charities and I compartmentalized my giving, which was, is totally wrong, right? You should be giving to charity out of your excess, out of your abundance if you want to. Your tithe has to go to the church. Your tithe has to go. It says, bring you the tithes into the storehouse. So it has to come to the house, right? Um, but like I'm saying, right, your actions, it literally says, right? But where your heart, but where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So your heart follows your treasure. So wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So if you are giving more to your children, that means you love your children more than you do, you do God, right? If you are trying to, to um, buy the affection of your children by having them think that you love them and all that stuff, you're doing that, right? You're showing your love to your children, right? By giving, right? By supplying their needs, by giving them to eat, right? You are... You are proving your love through your actions, and yet they don't appreciate it, whatever it is, whatever the situation, right? Because you are following scripture. Where your treasure is, your heart is also. So your, your, your treasure is going to feeding them. Your treasure is buying them clothes. Your treasure is buying them all that stuff. So your treasure is there. Your heart is there also. And then when it comes to God, your treasure isn't going to God, so you don't love him, even though you say you do. Right? right? So if I used this treasure, this $21,000 as treasure, and I sent it, and I sent it this direction to pay for bills, and to, so that means my heart is in bills. My heart is in paying Caesar what is Caesar. My heart is there. I don't know if you're getting this. I don't know if you're getting this, right? Because it's what the Bible says, and you have to follow by what the Bible says. For where your heart is, for where your treasure is, I'm sorry, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So your, your heart follows your treasure, right? So that's why the Bible talks a lot about giving. It talks about a lot of, about giving, right? Sell, that's why the test of sell everything that you have and give to the poor, because then that really means, okay, I, I really, I have to trust God now. Because if you sell everything that you have and you give to the poor, now you really have to trust God for sustaining you and supplying you. Just imagine, right? You have everything and you sell it all and you give it to God. Now you really have to trust God for him to sustain you. But that verse is for you to become a disciple, right? And this is what I've been, what I've been meditating myself within my own life of really saying, you know, screw the government in the sense that I'm not going to pay these bills. I'm going to go through bankruptcy. I'm going to go through all of that and then just, you know, live in a, because I'm the type of person that can, I have my car, that can, you know, live in a tent in a park and just evangelize all day and come home and be happy, right? And do all that stuff, right? Because then I really am selling everything. I'm just selling everything. So I, like, this, this, these, these are things that I've been kind of thinking. I was like, ah, this debt, it's going to take me some time to pay it off because once I can pay off that debt, which is about 46000 then I can do ministry full time. And this is what I wanted to do ministry full time. But obviously, in order for me to be able to, to maximize my giving and to be increasing in my giving and then to be able to pay, I got to go to work, right? Unless there's some millionaire, some Christian millionaire who says, okay, here, I'm donating all this money to the ministry. And I was like, oh, wow, then I can pay that and do all that stuff. But until then, I obviously have to, to work, right? So that's why I'm saying I got a part time and then I had this call to also do like a games, to film games and do all that stuff. So that stuff can pay for like the, the, the obligations of debt. And then the giving part, I can increase the giving through uh, business and all that stuff, right? 
So this revelation obviously gets a little bit deeper, right? Because it's the Bible is saying, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So one question you have to ask yourself is, well, where is your treasure? If your treasure is sitting in a, in a checking account, in a, in, a, in a savings account, then that's where your heart is. Your heart is in your savings account. It's there. You're not doing nothing with it, right? But then when you take that, then you give it to your children, you give it to whatever, that's where your, your, your heart is, right? So you inherently are proving to yourself and to God through your actions that you really love your whatever it is that your treasure is going to more than you love God. And this also with time and all this, like with your time also is how you prove as well because the Bible is talking about by actions, faith without works, faith without actions is dead. All right, so there's, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Um, and I think I'm gonna edit because, uh, edit, end it because it's uh, an hour and five minutes and obviously I can keep going, but I, I got generally the, the most important stuff out of the way. Um, and today is gonna, I'm gonna celebrate. So, because that testimony is a celebration for, for the ministry as well. Why? Because people are changing, right? People are, they're coming here and they're receiving revelation, they're receiving um, testimonies, they're receiving miracles, they're receiving healing, people are receiving. And this one was a, you know, it was a good one when I woke up today. So I'm gonna go edit this, maybe go and get something to eat and then celebrate with some ice cream for a day of celebration, right? Um, so I really don't know what to title this message because it's kind of just revelation upon revelation. There's a lot said here. If you didn't catch it, if you missed it, um, rewatch it, you know? But I'm definitely somebody, when you look at the ministry, I'm definitely the number one, definitely leading, um, and that's how it should be. Right. But I'm never going to reveal to you this stuff again. Why? Because then it does become boastful. Right. It kind of becomes like, oh, like, why are you constantly revealing this stuff? No. The only reason why is because I, I wanted to make it a learning lesson. We looked at through the days. I explained to you the months when we looked at each month and what was why, what was going to happen, what was happening, all that stuff and the tithing and the Leviticus. And, you know, we went into that and we went into the, this revelation on tithing, which is paying to God what is God. And even if you things that you've owed him. Right doing that and 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 the thing is god is so forgiving that if you say god forgive me of my debt he'll forgive you right but it's not to to then next week right you you don't pay your tithe or the next week and then you miss a week because the moment that you miss the week now you have to add 20 percent, right but these are these are things that are like it, it's it's on how it's focusing on you right it's focusing on like yeah i want to be perfect Right. And how you reach perfection is that. And obviously there's a lot of testimonies in my own life from through and all this stuff, but I'm not going to get into that because there's no point. Right. Um, and then telling you what the seed amounts are and all that stuff. There's no point. Right. Um, so that's going to be about it for today. All right. It's a pretty good lesson. Pretty good revelation. I hope you learned. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you caught some few things. So go ahead. I'm now going to call for the tithes and the offerings. So go ahead and Sow your seed, give your tithe, give your offering, whatever it is. You can go ahead and do that down below at GaryRojas.com. Be sure to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to pray for each and every single one of you right now, wherever it is that you are. So raise your hands. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. I want to thank you for this message, for this revelation, for being able to teach your children to be able to teach those of them who are watching in this present moment so that they may catch this revelation and have it forever that it may be an inspiration unto them for them to exceed their records for them to break their records each and every year that which they set for them to push through the boundaries of realities for them to push through the boundaries of what is possible for them to break records of supernatural growth and increase in the year of the Godspeed and promise father I pray for their offering I pray for their giving I pray for their seed whatever it is that you continue to supply them that you continue to provide for them that you continue to pour out for their their blessings so that they are able to receive that they are able to give 
that they are able to to provide those things which need to be provided for their families that you increase them in the revelation and in the knowledge of the word especially in this message that was given here today whatever it is that they ca caught let them have it and let not the enemy let not the the snare the sower the fowl of the air come up and uproot that word which was planted in them for the war which we fight lord is not against spiritual darkness and, and demons but it's really against the revelation of the word because the fowl comes to dig up the word which was planted in them that is the parable of the sower the devil the enemy comes to root up that word which was sown into their hearts so that way they forget and if they forget then they go and go back to who they were they go back to their old state that's what i want to cancel over their lives lord i want to cancel that any repetitiveness any turning back any backslidingness of going back to their old ways of going back to their old person we cancel that in the name of jesus for this service by this day that what they did last year, they will not do this year, but will increase and will be better. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I thank you. Amen and amen. All right, so that's going to be it for today's service. I hope you learned a lot. For those of you who are brand new here, if you've watched the whole thing, amen, glory be to God. And uh, I'm going to uh, say, make sure also like that you guys attend Friday prayer sessions. If you haven't been attending, if you say, oh, well, I don't feel like attending, make sure you're there. People are receiving testimonies, right? We are here praying corporately for you and for your families. Obviously, I'm praying for you guys always as well. But that's going to be it for today's message. And I hope to see each and every single one of you guys this week, Friday, uh, for prayer sessions at 530. I'll see each and every single one of you guys next week. God bless.